Oh god. Oh god, I'm coming in too fast. Down, down, down. Uh, uh, up, up. Oh god. Oh god. Never again. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. I, um, I don't have the hang of this thing yet. But nonetheless, between episodes, I, uh, I did a little bit of work. I slightly expanded the witchery area, just to match the circle a little bit better. It is now 14 squares wide. The circle still doesn't quite fit, but it's close enough for government work. I rejiggered the mechanics area, because that is where we're going to start working today. I made it bigger. I moved the smeltery back and some other things. I increased the size of our creosote tank, because I can. It now holds, let's see, it now holds slightly more than 6,300, or slightly less than 6,300 buckets. <clears throat> I tried out this black armor plating instead of the gray we had before. I think it looks slightly better. And also, the mechanics area, we're going to have a lot of spare pipes and stuff popping up all over the place and probably blocking lots of the lighting. And this place might look better when it's not evenly lit. Than the gray wood. <sighs> Let's put you away. I now have this thing hooked up to its own pipe that's hooked up to the tank, so we have a dedicated creosote carpenter, and I can expand out a wall of them if ever we need. Let's see. I dug out a proper maintenance corridor with one of my fancy new stairways. That one isn't quite sized correctly, but oh well. And, in general, I just did a lot of other types of decoration work. But, I did do a little nether journey. And you'll notice that my pick is now Manulian. Yes. We have ourselves Cobalt and Ardite and Osmium Ore. I wasn't sure if Cobalt Mining Level was good enough because I don't think that picks up Osmium. So we just went with Manulian. It's slightly slower, but it's not quite as slow as Osmium, which is technically the highest level mining level in the pack. And most importantly, we got ourselves lots and lots of Titanium. So I can take that and I can process it further with fire, earth, winter, summer, and for just strong essence, huh, weak sauce. So fire, I need to make more fire, earth, summer, winter, and we can just take one of these and uncraft it into four, and I presume also we need a seed. Let's just put that on there and let's see how fast this happens. Let me actually get my wand ready. You be quiet, God. I'm not going against nature. I swear, he's a little... Oomph. No? Fire, earth, summer, winter... Oh, the block of titanium. <laughs> of course. Yeah, look at that go. Oh, man. We have got all the mana. And just think... When I finally get around to fighting the Gaia Guardian, these things will get even faster. Oh dear. Oh my. Ooh. All the power. It makes me feel warm and tingly. In all the right places. Where did I put my crop sticks? I am not sure if I have any left. So... Today, we will be getting back into the technologic side of things. Because now that we have a source of titanium, we can start working on the next sort of tier of machines. Namely, we can use them to make ourselves some lasers. Now, when we just... This Rutile Seed is going to get us Rutile Essence, of course. And that 
is going to get us rutile ore, which turns into impure titanium. To make proper purified titanium, we need to mix in either a vat or a tinker's construct smeltery, which is more likely where we're going to do it. We need to max we need to mix that impure titanium with an equal amount of magnesium. Now to get magnesium, we are going to electrified goo. What the heck? What? I thought it was quicklime. Is it? Huh. Well, I'll I'll try quicklime anyway. But what the heck is this electric goo from? I have no idea. Well, um, I think that <laughs> we should be able to get magnesium from quicklime and water in a vat. And uh, to melt... Let me look for quicklime. Yeah, that's still a liquid that's in the pack. No? What? Okay, maybe it's called, like, molten limestone. Uh, that's bordered. Regular limestone. Uses. Okay, ship crafting, smelting, crucible furnace, quick lime. Yep. There we go. That's a huge relief. I thought I would have to do something weird. Not that, I mean, you know, it's just not my fetish. So, we need to melt down limestone to make quick lime and mix that with water in a vat. And quicklime, I believe, can only be melted in the crucible furnace. So, we are going to need to make a crucible furnace once again. I have the blocks in a box somewhere. But we are going to need to keep it constantly heated, meaning we need to finally automate lava. And I've been doing a little bit of research into how to do that. You saw before that we tried a system with the railcraft tank just crafting this essence of fire with these lava buckets, and that didn't really work. But fortunately, they can be used a little bit more directly, melting them in either a crucible furnace or in a Tycon smeltery. Smelter gets 250. I think they're the same, right? Yep. And smeltery is what I would want to use, because if it's at all reasonably sized, it'll be more efficient, and it won't be in use when we have no essence in the system. So, let's get started. We are going to build ourselves a small-ish smeltery. I'm thinking maybe 16 blocks. So, we need a controller. We are going to need a tank. We're going to need a drain, because even though I think we're going to be using buildcraft pipes for this, you still need a drain as an I.O. port. And we are going... No, we won't need a tap. Uh, we are just going to need a bunch of blocks, I think. That's probably not enough. That might be enough. Okay, let's do this right over here to where I moved the box of lava stuff. And let's just derp, 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 derp. derp. Hmm. Okay, now let's put this here. And let us put the tank on the back, and that should form up. Yep, confirmed valid smeltery. So then, if I put this like that, oh, I was hoping to get the port facing outward, but it doesn't really matter. That's just an aesthetic thing, ended up facing upward. Eh, I'd rather have it facing inward than upward. Sorry, I'm futzing. No. Fine. We'll we'll just do it that way. There. Hope you're happy with yourself. 
So, yes, by having the drain there, I think I can... I'll pipe the lava out, and I will have a clay pipe here, because the secondary behavior of clay pipes is they will prefer injecting into an inventory over into a pipe. So the, f the lava's first priority will be to go into this tank. And then I guess I'll pipe it farther down, and I'll inset a railcraft tank down here as just a buffer storage for a whole crap ton of lava. And then I will pipe the lava back out the bottom and just pipe it around to wherever I need it. I think that sounds like a fairly solid system. So, let us take that. It does need a little bit of lava to get itself started. And let's see what our conversion rate is going to look like. If I put all 16 in there, and we just wait for it to smelt down... You'll see that it does take a little bit of lava to do, but if this is not efficient enough, all we need to do is make the smeltery bigger, because it always consumes fuel at the same rate, even though the bigger the smeltery, the more you're doing at once. So they get more efficient as they get bigger. But still, this looks like a bit less... Uh, yeah, it's 120 millibuckets to get me three entire buckets worth. That is a pretty good ratio. I don't think we're going to have to worry about fuel efficiency in our lava production. Now, do I have a bunch of liquid pipes anywhere? Let's put this emerald pipe on the drain. Oops, wrong side. And let's just, well, let's get that clay pipe. Do this right the first time. I don't think lava can go into a liquid-fueled firebox. So I don't think this would be a simple system for automating power production. Not that we need it anyway, because we've got a pretty good system as we do. Okay. Let's just put this here so I don't have it sticking up. It's kind of out of sight over here. And I believe that for liquids, these don't need the filter programmed. Yep. There it goes. It just pipes into there. So, this means our first priority will be keeping the lava production going. Now, I am going to need to dig a pretty big hole in order to fit a pretty big tank. That's all boring drudge work. I will get back to you in a minute. Between cuts, I decided to make myself a tool I probably should have made a long time ago. This is the Tinker's Construct Hammer. It functions just like a pickaxe, except... It does a wide area. It's a little bit slower than the pick, but the fact that it does so many blocks at once means that on the whole, it makes digging large areas much less of a chore. So, I'll just lay out the tank. And I'm not going to go for any like fancy windows or anything, because this thing is going to be underground. Dun, dun. Remember, railcraft tanks have to be hollow on the inside. And then I can just do dupe, dupe, dupe. Let's make it at that level. So that we don't have it breaking up the ground. Perfect. Yes. Almost like I actually measured it out for once, isn't it? Mm-hmm. 2,000 buckets of lava. Okay. Now, let's pipe that down. And let's slab it over. Oops. Builder's wands. Very convenient. Sorry about that, got a notification that wasn't happening while I was talking for once, so I was able to actually cut it out. Mm, it wasn't any of you anyway. <laughs> so, let's get the input to this thing configured. I still don't have mechanism pipes, which I know I always talk about, but they really are convenient for all these things that we need them for. But... 
we are on the path to getting them. And some gold. And do I have a regular clay pipe anywhere? I should. Perception suddenly expands. Ah, that is a rare beneficial warp effect. Gives you night vision for a couple of minutes. That happens every so often. Yes, I do have some clay pipes. Ah, yes, and I want the emerald for that. Okay. So, emerald to there, and clay pipe to there, and I should just be able to loop it back around. Very simple, safe build craft system. And I forgot the engine. That's what I was looking for. And they should still be in here. Where can I put this that it's not too conspicuous? Let's just put it on top. Come on. There we go. Eh, not exactly inconspicuous, but oh well. Ah, yes, and it didn't, because this is items, it does need to be filtered. Okay, there it goes. And the clay pipe should prioritize inputting. And that will get more efficient as the engine reaches full speed. Eventually, again, we'll have mechanism pipes, and it will just input a full 16 all at once. And then the lava will come out here. Okay, come on, come on. I want to see if this thing doesn't overflow. I know it won't, but I still want to check and make sure, because I can be an idiot. There it goes. Okay. So then when I have this drawer voided, I can just have a farm of fire essence, probably somewhere underground over here, piping up into it. And its bottom slot is still free, so that will be out of sight. And we will have a source of lava gradually building up in that tank. And I didn't measure correctly because I need another valve for the bottom. Thankfully, I think I have a supply of valves. Yes, I do. And you know what? Let's actually pipe this over to here, to the smeltery. I don't want it putting into the... Oh, in case you were wondering, I have these seared glass tanks at the bottom of the smeltery so that I can have these nooks next to them, because otherwise the inside of the smeltery gets dark enough that it becomes spawnable space. By letting light pass through that area, um, you don't get monsters in your smeltery. That, I think, is basically the only hard limit on making smelteries too big or wide, because otherwise, you know... Once they get to a certain size, you can't help but get the inside being spawnable, because you can't put lights on the inside. So I'm just going to guess going down that far. And let's run the pipe over through here. And should... Aha! Okay. So I can put the valve right there. And so long as you don't change... No? No? Why no? Why you no? Is this still the edge? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, valves have to be on one of the inside squares so that they can access the liquid. So that should do it. Yes. Okay, and I can just put that over there, and now we run the pipe, and uh, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. yep, <sighs> parkour, and then just yep, and where did it all go? Where did it all go? There did it all go. And okay, now we have the smelter being fed. The uh, 
the industrial smeltery instead of the lava smeltery. And that is just how we will be using our supply of lava. We will be... This also gives me kind of a way of finding this vein, as it were. I can just, you know, look along this area whenever I need to dig down to find the pipe. So, next up, I think I will... No, I, I don't think I'll start the auto farm for the lava just yet. Because I would also like to position my crucible furnace. And I think I will also use that farm for making limestone. Just so we can get this a little bit closer to fully automated. So. Let's decide where we want these things. Hmm, this is fairly, obviously, a, as good a place as any, I guess. So let's put that down there, and then let's dig down again and find ourselves a vein. Okay. And there's that semi-sorted. Then I can just put these right here. Okay. Now that'll slowly heat up over time. Maybe I should put a lever on it, just in case I want to turn it off. Hmm. hmm. And now, so long as I occasionally dump a load of fire essence into that drawer, this system will all stay heated. And yes. So the next step is, oops, I don't want it in there. I want it in there. And I should lock that drawer. I should lock that drawer. Okay, next step is to melt us some limestone, put down our vat, and figure out how we are going to want to automatically pipe water into the vat and how to pipe magnesium out of the vat. Piping out is fairly easy. That can be done. I need to ingify some of my... Yes, I have loads of iron. It's just ugh, loads and loads from all those test builds of... of uh, I think I can throw this out now from all those testing builds trying to get the, what are they called? The casting channels working. And I think the finalized system is very, very pretty. Especially since I have this button here just to pour everything out automatically. I should deal with the remainder of that aluminum brass that I had to make to make a hammer. Eh, later. Yes. Limestone, need limestone. Limestone is made out of earth and water essence, so we're going to have to farm that along with our fire essence. Do I have any fire essence in my materials crate? Yes, I do. Its ratio is just like this and just like that. No? Oh, it's water, derp. Well, I have water anyway. Yes, it's only a pity I don't have any use for air essence. Then I could have the whole set. Now, I believe the melting point on this stuff is fairly low. It might already be ready. 240, it's... Oh, it's at 825. <laughs> okay. Thankfully, lava will get it up to 1500, so we don't need any special fuel for this. Sure. Next, we need another emerald fluid pipe. We need a couple more fluid pipes, just regular ones. Uh, we need a vat. And we need some engines, and we need some other things. 
we simply should be able to put the draw right here. Actually, I think these things can auto eject. They don't need the pipe. So I should be able to put that right there. Put that right there. And that there. Yeah, it says auto eject items fluids. Let's see if that works. I will get back to you when this thing is fully heated up. Hey, while we're waiting for that to happen, check this out. Warm. Yeah, the more sparks you have just in the general vicinity of your terrestrial production, and the more of those sparks that are on mana pools, of course, the faster terrestrial production goes. And with a total of, let's see, it's nine downstairs. And I think it takes from all sparks, including dominant and recessive. So yeah, we have a lot of pools nearby, and it is making a lot of Terra Steel. And I decided that it is time for an upgrade. So I'm going to take all of my seasonal runes. I'm going to take off my armor. It's been a while since I've just seen my bare skin. Mm, that sounded dirtier than I thought it would. And I am just going to take these, oops, that is uh, the wrong button, uses. And I am going to upgrade these. Oh yeah. And notice it keeps the of revealing. But it does not keep its enchant. I am going to have to re-enchant these over time. And still, what the heck? Oh, it's 12. Derp. I did not make enough Terra Steel. Oh, well, I already have the other three on hand. Okay. What? Oh, oh god. Why when I just had the armor taken off? Why? Mind spiders! Oh god! <laughs> that is literally the worst possible timing! <laughs> oh... Yeah, mind spiders are a thing. Run! Thankfully, they go away after a while. And I didn't have the food on the... <laughs> I am never taking off my armor again. I think that's the first time mind spiders have ever actually been dangerous to me. <laughs> oh, I should have the wand on my hotbar. It needs to be on your hotbar to suck up the V-orbs. Okay, come here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not only can they be killed, but I think that just on their own, they will eventually disappear after a while. Let's let's put this on. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> neat. I okay. I think I think nope. They're not gone. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, get my heart rate back under control. What do you? They're so hard to see on the black tiles. That is a disadvantage. I did not design with mind spiders in mind. Yeah, okay. Okay, you just you just do that. You have fun. And then you go away and die. Oh jeez. Okay, has the has the crucible heated up yet? Why, yes, it has, but it's not auto-ejecting. Why is it not auto-ejecting? You know, I think I might vaguely remember that in order to auto-eject, the thing that you're ejecting into needs to be on its lower slot. Yeah... 
Okay, then I think that in order to do... Well, I could, but then I would have to... You know what? I can just put the hopper down there. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I was hoping to get some time to admire my new armor before I had to use it. Oh, and of course... Of course, I, I mean, I was planning to make a pump right after that while I was, you know, I was going to go off camera again because I was just supposed to be an aside, but I mean, I guess, I guess... <sighs> and yes, I am going to have to cut out tons of this because it's just dead air. But hey, that just means I get to talk to my future self. What up, you? Still being sexy? Oh yeah, you are. My boy. I am out of glass, of course. <laughs> Need the mechanism pipes. Need the mechanism pipes. Actually, let's let's go over what mechanism pipes are gonna require. I think they're called logistics pipes. Yes, logistics transporter. They, well, we have tons of steel, but they're going to need this basic control circuit, and that is going to require a source of osmium. It's going to require the lasers. Uh, this enriched iron is going to require a metallurgic infuser. And that is just going to require some more osmium and stuff like that. And the steel casing, which I'm going to need titanium processing for. So yeah, we have some advancements to do in order just to get these pipes that I want for everything. Alright, that is all that. Then I'm going to need a water source. And I'm going to need to dig a pump for this vat. And I think I can just fit this. Well, no, because the railcraft tank is right there. So I'll have to do it right here. Let's go one farther out. It'll be easier to hide that way. And let's go a full two down. Okay, one water source. Two water sources. And by the way, you want to make your uh, pump holes three by three like this. Because, oops, build craft pumps actually do, when they pick up a thing of water, they uh, really do suck up one of the water source blocks, and if you don't build it like this, they have a chance of running the hole they're in dry. Actually, let's go down one farther. Because then the pump can sit lower, yes. And I think that I am, instead of turning the camera off like I do, I've, I've realized that I have a one terabyte hard drive for a reason, for one thing. And for another, I might catch Mind Spider shenanigans style things. Like it was extremely, extremely, um, quote unquote, lucky to catch that instant on camera. Okay, there we go. Lay out the pump. And then you put on your four wooden engines. And actually, for how much water this thing is going to be using, I could probably just use one wooden engine. But four is kind of the tradition with pumps. Yes, and you can see the remnants of the old fishing hole here. It tells you about where we were, if you want to 
compare our old base layout. And I think covers will fit over those levers just fine. Of course, now I need to decide how I want to decorate this because I cannot make covers out of cracked sand. Oh well, I'll do that in a second. I put away my pipe. Pumps, like real craft tanks, do not need a insertion pipe and engine. They will just eject directly into gold pipes, or, you know, cobble, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, so that is, you see, it is going. It is smoky smoky. And that should eject into this drawer in just a second. Come on. There it goes, and I can lock that. I said I can lock that. Okay, so we now have a source of magnesium. And technically, that is all I really need, because I can just dump the limestone into here and dump occasional things of fire essence into there, because... Well, oh, there's nothing in the tank right now. But once I get a little bit of a buffer built up, that will last for freaking ever. Those mind spiders. They they are they are on my mind. And they are spiders. But of course, now the next step is to build this out more properly so that we can get this closer to full automation. I would like to have hundreds upon hundreds of lime of magnesium built up, and yeah, for that we are going to need a source of limestone, and we are going to need a source of fire essence so that none of this ever goes cold. So, I am going to figure out a layout of where I want to put this farm, and I am going to mull over if there's anything else I would like to grow there, because I think I am not going to need all that much fire essence or all that much limestone coming in to keep this producing at full speed. I'll talk to you again in a minute. Okay, I've dug out a small one of my standard pattern farms down here. I'm not filling up the whole thing just yet because well, I know at the very least I'm going to want rutile seeds down here, because I've decided I'm going to do a fully automated titanium setup. But I also think I might use some of this space for other things, but I haven't fully decided yet, and I think that will wait again until I have mechanism pipes. Because they really will make routing it all around so much easier. So, on this we want to route out fire, water, and Earth. And oh yes, our next new golem friend. Hello there. And I feel kind of bad leaving this guy just underground. He'll be lonely. He won't have a window to us. So he gets a little... Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh, my new friend. Anyway, let's put you right there, and let's at least tell you that this is your home. But I won't give you your core yet until I get the piping installed. Okay, so let's do this up on the ceiling so that I still have this area as a walkway. And because this won't be a farm that I have a window into, I won't be too terribly concerned about making it exceptionally pretty. This will all be buried underground for the most part. And up here, I am going to need a couple of diamond pipes because this is going to be a bit of a routing problem. Diamond pipes are programmable buildcraft pipes. I'll show you what I mean. Yes, just get all those. 
They are also the good bulk energy transport pipe. So, bottom slot on there. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Problems. Oh, I need some fire essence in my inventory. Yes. Actually, let me put that one lower so that I can continue the routing underground. Yeah, let's run over to there. Okay. So, I put this here, and we'll continue on that way so I can see what color that is. Continue on that way. And I think if I just right-click it, yes. So, on the white direction, we are going to want fire essence. And on the red direction, we are going to want everything else. In this case, just earth and water. On red. Okay. Sorry about that, got bit by something. So, if I put our gold pipe and connect it all properly, there we have it. So, next up, I need to route the pipe over to here. And I need to make myself some drawers, yes. Let's clear out a little bit of an area. I need to make myself some drawers and I need to make myself some auto assemblers. So, I think what I am going to do is I'm going to run this cable a little bit more over. Okay, so, we'll have one here, we'll have, actually let's do this underground. One here, we'll have one here, and now we can do the diamond pipes, and I'll do them both as diamond just for future proofing. So, where did the other things I had go? Oops. We need, let's put earth on black here and then water on red. And we want earth and we want water on black here. Water, us. And then you just do that. Okay, and we can put the auto assembler right here. And that needs a pipe plug because I do not want to pipe into that. I keep getting the wrong chest. I'm out of pipe plugs. There we go. Okay, so we block that off, so it shall only be getting its goodies by drawing from the draws. Which is, you, you, that's why they're called drawers. You draw from them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can put this here. That, sir. And now it is pumping, and we will test it. You know what, let's just put a whole ton of stuff in there anyway. That's the other advantage of emerald pipes for these farms. Uh, because they'll only draw what they're explicitly programmed to, you can 
sometimes derp up and the hopper hawk won't uh, won't screw you over for good. Okay, so the fire essence is coming into here just fine. And that is going to take a moment to empty out. Because that engine is still heating up. So let's just speed that along a little bit. And the Earth's essence... is ending up at its destination just fine. And the water. Yeah, the water is good, yes. So, now we just need to program this. And set it to always active. Good, yes, it is a drawing from the drawers. Now we need yet another emerald pipe. Let's at least grab those. I'm out of emerald pipe. Easy enough to fix. So, once all this is routed, I think that will actually be it for the episode today. I'll end it with turning the golem on. Because I am going to have to wait on getting those rutile seeds. Well, no, I can, I can set up the system I'll use for it. So we'll do that. Okay, so we tell it that it wants to use this limestone. And now we just need to route that into a system like we have up here. So we just put that all there. And that should work fine. Yes. Okay, and then when I put the engine... Where did the engine go? I did not make the engine. That is where it went, yes. Okay, let's put that down that. And that draws out just fine. Okay. Lock that drawer. And I need yet another engine because I am going to do this. Hmm. That is potentially a problem. I can move that lever. That lever is just fine to move. It can be sitting right here. Okay. That is not a problem. I need a clay pipe. Ah, I cannot wait for mechanism pipes. They are so much less finicky. This is why I'm waiting until I do... Until I get those to do all those major infrastructure projects I keep saying I want to do. Because they're just so finicky. Oh, oh god. Okay, now let's put that on there and let us pipe plug that. Okay, that should work. And I need yet another engine which I should have made while I did that first run. You be quiet. I'm rebuilding the planet. What more do you want from me? This is why I don't worship deities. It just, just encourages them.
Yeah, you heard me. Okay, and then I can just take that, quite list that, do that, and turn on. Okay, now we have limestone melting. We have it coming in at a nice rate of knots. We have lava. We just need to activate our new friend. Hello, little one. Oh, so industrial. Ooh, what? What are you doing? Why, why did you do that? No. Our... Oh, oh god. It is divine intervention. I I apologize for my blasphemies. Well, um, he seems to have calmed down. Um, maybe that was just a fluke. I'm gonna have to go and check on all the farms now. Maybe maybe that hat is making him. Uh, yeah. Uh, that is, that is worrying. We might have rebellions on our hands. They're too cute for me to purge. Okay, all that farm is looking fine. Yeah, it's looking fine indeed. Let me just top off my food while I'm here. Doop, doop. Okay, and Mr. Grumbles, are you still being good? Yes, of course, Mr. Grumbles is my firstborn son. He is just fine. Okay. That was, uh, that was weird. So, um, ow. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem to be happening again, so I think I will just... It did happen again. Stop being ominous. Well, um, he just seems to really hate those two plots. I guess that's okay. Huh. Okay, now, now why isn't he? You should be harvesting that. I guess he just hated those two plots. Okay. I am going to button up this area so that I don't keep falling into it. Well, let's do that later. Let's do that later because I would like to keep an eye on, on that one. That man shaker, he's a loose cannon. Let us make... So, uh, let me walk you through what I think I'm going to do. Now that we have a source of limestone being melted, and thus a constant source of magnesium, I am going to make two smallish smelteries. One is going to melt magnesium dust, and the other, once we have them bred up, is going to be accepting rutile ore from the farm down below on those empty plots that we have. So, each of those smelteries is going to be melting one, and they are going to be piping out into some vats to combine those liquids to make myself pure titanium. That is the plan. Okay. You see, I didn't set up a terribly big one, because this is just meant to be something that's for little intermediary processing, and it's constantly on. I just have another one of my input loops here, piped down at the bottom. And there we go. This thing should melt down all the magnesium gradually over time. Oh, and of course, yes, it is uh, being fed from our lava system. And next time on Regrowth, 
I'll have another tank just like this sitting maybe somewhere around here. And I'll have the rutile ore underground coming up in here. I'll be processing it in just another similar way with the auto assembler, piping it into here. So then I'll have molten impure titanium. I'll have molten magnesium. And I will pipe those out from the smelteries into some vats to form them into proper pure titanium. And I'll just have a big compacting drawer that's sitting right here. And we will have fully automatic titanium. And with that, we will be making lasers, lasers, next time on Regrowth.